Hello. I'm Retro Jules. So I got an email. And my email looked like this from Wargaming. Command, conquer and win. Try commander mode and help us shape the future. And then I noticed the little badge underneath wasn't the World of Tanks badge, it was the Mercenary badge. And a little tiny piece of me, well actually quite a big piece of me, died inside. You are personally invited to try your hands as a commander this weekend and help shape the future. This is a unique opportunity to join us as we experiment with the one versus one commander gameplay. So a select few of us have an early access to this new game mode, whereby when the weekend passes, we'll then be sending our feedback to Wargaming and what we think. Immediately, I was dubious and it was like, oh, what have they done now? A single player game. Now, maybe I was thinking perhaps the player base is dropping and when it comes down to only two people left playing the game, which will be me and you, at least we can still play in this one versus one game. A slightly cynical view, I admit. This game is a real-time strategy. You don't drive a tank, you have a platoon of tanks, and you point them in the direction you want them to go, and you try and take out the enemy. It's you versus one other person. You make all the decisions, you make all the cock-ups, and you've only got yourself to blame. But when you win, you can take all the credit for making all the right decisions. So I'm making this video Friday night on the 7th of September at 12 minutes past nine. And these were the first four games in a row that I had trying this new single player commander mode. Well, that's the button down on the left, play commander. And absolutely had no idea what to expect. The right trigger is multi-select. The right bumper selects all tanks. The left stick moves the camera. Easier said than done. Left and right on the D-pad are next or previous tank. The right stick rotates the camera and zooms. A selects the tank. And X is move the tank to that point or attack. And, firstly, it was Hidden Village. Hurrah! Hidden Village is back. I used to love Hidden Village. And you're really going to have to bear with me, because this was the first game, this was the first four games, not a Scooby-Doo of a clue, what I was doing, and I really couldn't get the hang of the camera. It's an encounter battle. The cap is at C7 and I'm just really not sure what I'm doing here I seem to have quite a well balanced platoon of tank destroyers mediums and heavies and a scout tank and I'm sort of thinking I thought I'm gonna move my first tank to that point not realising that I was actually moving the whole lot to that point. And at this stage, I, 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 I wasn't too bothered. I'll, I'll just go with it. Maybe that'll work. It's an encounter battle after all. Just playing around with the buttons. And even after the fourth game, I'll hold my hands up. This is not the usual retro camera work that you may be used to. It's not smooth and panning and atmospheric. It's reactional. It's jerky. It's really not knowing what I'm doing. And I didn't seem to have the ability to pan right out and sort of get the camera to the view that I really wanted. And that may come with time. Or it may not even be in the game yet. I don't really know. So this is my whole platoon, all huddled up, just on the outside of the cap, like I kind of told them to be. 
And they're heading for that little point. There we go, just behind the tree. And, well, we're capping. Okay, well, seeing as this is game one, we'll just go with the cap. And then I thought, well, let's just move everybody into the cap. And you don't have direct control over any tanks. When you select a tank, you can't actually physically move it around the map. All you can ever do with these tanks is point, select, click and move to. And that's it. You can't tell them when to fire. I don't know if you can tell them who to fire at. The X button says move to or attack. The tanks will automatically engage anything that comes into their line of sight. But I don't know if, for argument's sake, if you saw one of the enemy tanks around the corner of a building, whether you could select your tank to actually go there and attack it, or if you can actually direct your tanks to aim at a certain target. That I do not know, and I didn't really discover that in the first gameplays. But it would appear that we're winning. There are two tanks down. And I'm going to win by a filthy cap. And oh, I just really struggled with the camera. The minimap kind of helps you realise which way you're looking. It's kind of like a view cone. But I just couldn't get the hang of it. And well, first game... And I won. Very, very rarely that I say, do I turn on World of Tanks and the first game is a win. But this one was. And didn't learn a whole lot from that, apart from how to move my whole platoon from one point to another. So this time I wanted to get a little bit more out of the game. I wasn't going to head straight to the cap. I was going to do what I would normally do when I play this map, or when I used to play this map, and that's head for the hill at about E6 and spot the enemy. But I did decide that actually I'm going to move the whole lot because that would seem easier. And this is what I'm starting to think to myself. Well, actually, you could have sent the scout first. You could have the heavies following behind. You could get the tank destroyers going to different locations. And I'm starting to think about the strategy. I'm still struggling with the camera. I managed to accidentally click the right view. But I couldn't always seem to pan out and get the view that I wanted. And I think by clicking the stick is how you just have to flick between the different views that you want. You're always trying to lift the camera up. This was the this was the sort of camera angle I was always after and couldn't always achieve it. So I've got my whole platoon up on the hill, probably a bit exposed, but that's where they are. And I kept a tank destroyer back at C5. And I thought, right, don't cap, don't move everybody in the cap, but it is an encounter battle. So it wouldn't hurt to move one of the tanks in there. And it would kind of pay to try and move a tank in there that isn't blocked by another. They do steer and work around each other, but it's, try it's best to try and pick an easy path for speed and efficiency. So this is how you're not to tank in World of Tanks. You all sit on top of a hill and go, hi guys, shoot at us. But this was game number two, and I just thought I would see how this goes. So, I've got a tank destroyer heading to the cap, and we are now capping. Hopefully, putting a little bit of pressure on the other guy. And I love saying that, because you're only up against one other person. You're either going to win, or you're going to lose. And that's it. And both guys are going to know who's the winner and who's the loser. Who played the game the best. Not reliant on a team doing certain things that you expect of them. The team is going to do 
exactly what you tell it. So I'm just trying to drop my Prima Victoria. Sort of trying to drop it hole down a little bit behind the hill. And we're still capping with my tank destroyer. And it feels like I'm doing a little bit better with the camera angles, but I just couldn't always just get see, I just couldn't always get the view. It's like, where are my tanks? Where are my tanks? Well, that's their tanks. Here's my tanks. Really not getting the hang of the camera. I don't know whether the camera's a little bit glitchy or the modes aren't quite right. Chances are it's just me getting used to it. Right, they've got a medium heading towards the cap. I am one tank down. I still got all my guys up on the hill and I thought, right, well, can I get this Prima Victoria just to back up a little bit? Again, oh, there goes my Scorpion. That wasn't so good. Oh, this isn't looking good now at all. But then, if you stick your whole team up on a hill and say, shoot me, but then, why aren't they shooting them? Come on, guys. Right, so, Prima Victoria, drop back. This Prima Victoria is hopefully kind of hold down, not really sure. And they're all moving in. And... Yeah, you see, if you, if you point behind a tank, it'll just reverse. So you have to start thinking, well, actually, if I want that tank to turn around for its armour to face the enemy, I'm going to have to select a couple of points to turn it round first. Well, I quite like the position my Prima Victoria on the left is in. This is not a good position, and this was the one that reversed. So I'll just move it right up onto the top of the hill, shall I? Because nobody's going to see it up there. And the other Prima Victoria, I'm trying to sort of get behind the hulks of my destroyed platoon. Well, it's not a platoon anymore. It's me in my Prima Victoria. Never had one before. I'm not going to have one for much longer by the looks of things. Okay, well, lessons learnt. Didn't win by capping, didn't try and cap. Managed to move a few vehicles round relatively strategically, but not entirely successfully. So if you're wondering, there is only one map available. And I've spawned back on the other side this time. So plan was select the whole team and move them yeah, just onto this hill. This could be a really good point. Off they go. Yep, happy with that. Still not getting to grips with this camera system. But I'm really... Do you know what? It's kind of Moorish. Because you're only up against one person, you really, really want to beat them. You're not up against 15. It's just you and that other guy. So you, so you want to win. And... I'm thinking in this game, let's just try and split the groups up. And then I realised that, oh, I hadn't selected my whole team. I'd left my tank destroyers behind. Let's get them to move up too. Okay. So, yeah, I, I think... I think the key to this game is going to be getting the hang of the camera. I think once you've got the hang of the camera, you know what you're doing with it, you know where you want to be looking, then you're going to be in more control. So this is where I'm trying to split my... I'm trying to be strategic here. I want to get one of my tanks to go around the back of the map and see if I can flank their team proper strategy rather than set all my tanks together again on the top of a hill where they can be easily seen so i'm sending the liberté because i'm thinking that's probably the fastest tank i've got and now i want to drop some tanks 
back and I'm really sorry if this makes your eyes go. It was doing my head in in the game. I knew what I wanted to do and I knew where I wanted to look and I just couldn't do it. Right, Liberté's dropped back. Right, we'll get it to move there. So that's going to work. And, well, it would seem that even though I'm trying to get my Liberté to go around the back and do some flanking, that actually positioning my team, actually they are just on the back of the hill, which is actually quite a good position. So let's get the tank destroyer up the top, see if it's got a good line of sight, and yeah, it gets boshed straight away. Well, it's going to, it's on the top of a hill. Still not a good idea, but I'm not really sure what I've done in this game, but whatever I've done, it's the right thing to do. And actually, I'm probably thinking my Prima Victorias were probably faster than the Liberté. For some reason, I had it in my Liberté was a medium, and of course it's a heavy. Oh, well I, well I won. And yeah, I didn't really do anything at all in that, but getting the hang of this now, keeping my tanks out of trouble and moving them to where they should be. Do you know what? I'm actually starting to enjoy this. I'm actually going in with an attack plan. I am going to flank the enemy on this game. I'm going to do a proper job and I am going to come out victorious. What can possibly go wrong? So, sending the light tank out first to do some scouting. Secondly, followed by the rest of the team to get them up front. Ready. On to victory. I see one. And again, going to try and keep them on the back of the hill. Enemy the enemy are going straight for the cap. And the back of this hill worked well for me last time. The enemy have gone right round the back of the village. And I'm thinking, right, let's let's get a tank destroyer up on a high point behind a bush. Enemy. Yeah. Up there. And if that's got to be a really good position. Keep the rest of my guys here. Where can I send that TD? Um, what about moving, yeah, yeah, over to the west, which is pretty much where they are, could well have a line of sight from there, and of course it's got to get there, it's got to mush its way through the other tanks, I didn't really think about the line of getting it there, so what I should have done was clicked to go round the tanks first, and then sent it on its way. And I don't remember sending the scorpion over the bridge. What did I do there? I'm not sure what I've done there. That's... Okay, the strategy's gone a little, little bit to pot here. Right, what am I going to do? They are all hiding. They are not going to cap. There we go. Right, that's... Get the scorpion. That's the direction. And I want to get it probably up on that hill actually behind just yeah right I quite like the position I've got my TDs in and they've lost three tanks already I'm winning but taking a bit of a pasting they've, so heavies have come right round to the northeast I probably need to start dropping some of these tanks behind cover. I'm really enjoying this. Imagine this with different maps, bigger maps. Maybe more tanks. I'm not sure how many tanks you'd actually want on your platoon to actually control. But I really like... 
I like the fact that you know how the game works already, but now you can think as each individual tank and not rely on anybody else. You can't shout, I need a tank destroyer up there. Where are you? Why are you sitting at the cap? Base camping. You can physically move it yourself and get it to where you want it. And I'm really liking the strategy of this. Well, they're only one tank down now. All their tanks, so they've got the scout tank just outside the cap. Three tank destroyers. Only one we can see. So two are out of my line of sight. They're round the back, aren't they, somewhere at B9. Hiding. So let's start bringing some tanks. See, I really should turn that Liberté round. Just click in front of it, so then its armour is facing forward. So where's my other tank destroyer? There. Nice position. Covering the cap. Should they try a filthy cap. That scorpion's in a better position now. It's in a bit of a dip before. I don't think it could shoot at anything it saw. And... We still haven't got the other two, so I'm going to move it round the back. Now what do we do with the front? Should we move you guys round? Prima Victoria's not on the health, either of them. I lost my Liberté. Do I send the other Prima Victoria to go with it? Got my IS-3 going that way. Just need to surround them now. Right, how's that scorpion doing? They've still not lit anybody up. Where's the scout tank? Ah, it's there. Right, move, turn. <laughs> that's, that's the light tank taken care of. <laughs> right. TD, just on the back of the wall of that... I can't remember what it is, Palace or whatever it is, in Hidden Village. It's so nice to see Hidden Village. This was another one of those beautiful Oriental maps. A very small map. And it's really nice to be playing a new game mode, but still playing tanks on a golden oldie map. I'm really enjoying this. I think I'm going to be spending more time playing this at the weekend. Seeing as I'm a crash test dummy, and who better to be a crash test dummy than me? Yeah, let's move. Aha! Hang on, here we go. Just <laughs> oh, one more shot. Surely that scorpion's on a reload. Is it not going to shoot me first? No. <laughs> and my prima Victoria comes in. And finishes the job. Well, that for me was a relatively well thought out strategic victory. I really enjoyed that. That was good fun. And I won. Hurrah. When all is said and done, and you're having a really crap day because you've been grinding. Or the teams have been falling apart. Or the games you've been playing are full of way too many light tanks trying to get their Tusk contract completed and just not having a good time of things. This game mode is going to be the answer because you can still play tanks, still be strategic, still play the game you know and love, but have complete control over your entire platoon and not have to rely on your team members to do what you think in your head would be the right thing or the thing to do. You can actually physically do it and see if it works. When I first saw this, I was a little bit dubious. When I saw the game table in our garage, I was kind of wishing that perhaps it might be a pool table 
So when tanking doesn't work out, you can have a nice game of pool with a buddy. But the thought of this game on different maps, with maybe more tanks, who knows, I think it's going to be really good. I enjoyed it. I really hope you enjoyed seeing it. Really going to be interested in your comments below. If you haven't had a chance to play this game mode because you haven't been invited, really want to know what you think of it initially. And if you have been invited and you've been playing it, I'd love to know what you think of it too. For me, I really like it and I'm looking forward to playing this game mode more. Really hope you enjoyed the video. Keep safe, keep tanking, and I'll see you soon.